to Realism Overhaul. Today we are making our way through 1954 and halfway through 1955 as well. Kicking it off, we have a KX-4 flight. I believe Jebediah would be the pilot of today's flight in the first quarter of 1954. And this is looking to complete an X-Planes high contract. Unfortunately, we ran into a bit of a problem for this entire launch. For whatever reason, we had frame rate skipping at a regular interval. And this isn't something that I really experienced before or after so far. So what I wanted to do was fly this mission and then land it as quickly as possible. So normally for this mission, we would have a glide pattern to slow down a bit before hitting the runway. But I chose because of this air, I just wanted to restart the game as quick as possible to just try to hit the runway after like one turn um, and hope the brakes would be fast enough at slowing down. Unfortunately, that's not what ended up occurring. We we ended up losing the life of another Kerbal today, Jebediah Kerman. You will be missed. And this is the event that actually canceled this KX4 program. We're no longer going to be launching gliders up on a on a rocket like this until we have a little bit better tech, just so that uh we keep our Kerbals alive for a bit longer. On the other hand, we're a bit closer to using the Kerbals that you guys have applied for in my Discord. So, I mean, you gotta look at the bright side, right? Keeping the program moving forward despite the unfortunate events which just occurred, we have another S4 suborbital flight looking to complete the low space film return contract. Something I improved upon since last episode is the aerodynamics of these early rockets. Previously, I have been spin stabilizing these with slightly rotated fins from the launch pad. And someone in the comments called me out on that saying, hey, you don't need to do that actually. And I realized, hey, I don't need to do that actually. The fins are pretty good at stabilizing so long as you get up to speed pretty quickly and so long as you actually pay attention to the center of lift and center of mass, keeping the center of lift, of course, behind the center of mass, you are able to keep a rocket very, very steady and straight without spinning like absolute crazy, which is something I wish I would have been doing in the previous episodes, but you'll see all of the rockets in this episode will not have offset fins to spin stabilize the entire ascent. Now, technically, the low space film return missions I'm sending up this episode, which there are two of, this is the first one, do spin stabilize. However, this is pretty much only spin stabilizing the payload. The reason for this is this first uh, low space film return uses an A4 rocket, and that will flame out while it's still in the atmosphere. And when the engine burns out, the rocket will tend to sway back and forth and maybe flip end over end this high in the atmosphere. So what I immediately do pretty much right after uh, engine burnout is use some spin motors to spin it up so that it can get out of the atmosphere pretty much entirely. And then I have more spin motors the opposite direction which will slow it down to a stop. And once it is stopped, I let go of the payload, which in this case is a film return camera. I slapped a hull VDS cam on the bottom too so we get a nice shot. We can get a, a not dizzy look of Florida as we ascend to our apogee and then descend back into the atmosphere to recover. Later on we'll see this same flight with an RD-102 instead of an A4, which will get a much higher altitude, much further down range, and a much better view of Florida. To quickly go over a rocket that went up while I was talking about the S4, uh, the S4-102, which was testing the RD-102, completed a downrange distance launch vehicle development difficult contract. That's a mouthful. And its flight trajectory was absolutely no spin stabilization, just a slight angle on launch, and then the engine ignited and completed the contract. Moving swiftly ahead to the rocket on the screen, we have the Arrow 1. 
This was a sounding rocket, I know. I thought we were done with sounding rockets. However, I really needed some more science and this seemed like the most cost efficient way of getting it. Essentially, it's a proper sounding rocket now with the new knowledge of making sure the fins are on correctly, center of mass, center of lift, all that. We don't need spin stabilization at all, which is great because I was sending up biological sample capsules to get the science from them. Aero 1 was not initially designed to complete any contracts, but rather just designed to be launched up to grab science. However, it was also able to complete low space biological contracts, uh, the final two of the three contracts available for that. So we were able to get some funds back as well. The Aero 1 launched seven times during this time period. However, I'm only gonna show two of the launches to keep things moving along. Aero 1 saw six successful flights, one failure and um, one of the Aero B engines actually did not ignite, causing the vehicle to not reach its target. It's still parachute, no crazy explosion like that, so nothing really to show. But of the six successful flights, we collected 35.9 science, as well as the funds from the contracts we were able to complete, which now pushes us into 1955. In the first half of 1955, we unlocked the tech node Mature Supersonic Flight, which gave us access to, I don't remember the name, but a new jet engine that was able to, in theory, complete an X-Plane Supersonic Flight. Since right now, because of what happened with Jebediah, we are canceling the X-Plane high contracts, but we can, we're still gonna go for the speed here. It's, it's pretty interesting, I haven't done any of these actually at all ever. And I know generally everyone uses the XLR11 engine to complete these. However, I have yet to install Terabee and I don't think I'm going to. Only because the parts included in Terabee aren't really used past early game. And previously when I've gone past early game, I tried uninstalling the mod and it actually broke the save without it there. So I sort of just wanted to avoid that and see if I could do the early game without it. Luckily, I think this engine is a godsend. The first X-Plane supersonic flight available to us was to fly at 12 and a half kilometers, around 500 meters per second. And the aircraft for the job is the KX-3. It's literally just the shell of a KX-2 that I built and slapped on one of the new engines and some air intakes. And honestly, I was impressed. It does the job perfectly well. So hopefully we will see a few more of these in the future. And finally we have the RD-102 photo. Very original name, I know, but it's an RD-102 
carrying a low space film payload so and it isn't really designed to be used very often just to complete the contract itself so this launch is what we've seen previously with the a4 rockets however the rd102 is much more powerful so we're able to get a much better view of florida this way I know it's been, I think, a few weeks since the previous episode. I want to say sorry for the gap. There's been a lot going on, not only because of the global pandemic, but also I moved into my own brand new to me apartment, and things are finally all settled, and I'm finally able to do this voiceover and get this episode uploaded. I'm also taking a few weeks off of work because of the thing I first mentioned. So possibly we'll see streams over on my Twitch linked below. To be honest, I can't promise anything because I'm not sure how productive I'm going to be outside of work. There's a very long list of games on my Steam library and I'll definitely be cracking down on some episodes here, but I can't say I'll be doing that the entire time. Also, I think now would be a good time to show off these fancy graphs, also linked below in the quarterly report, to show the current progress of the series up to now 1955. We've got our science accumulated, our KCT upgrade points so far, and how much spare funds we had at the end of each quarter. Now with those on the screen, I am fully prepared to see everyone in the comments saying how poorly or slowly I am progressing through this series. <laughs> So anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.